Welcome to Podnuts Daily for January 16th, 2009, episode number 138. This is going to be the last episode um, for this, for a while. I'm, I'm taking uh, the whole next week off from the shop and I'm probably going to not do the podcast unless something really interesting comes about. Um, I will be taking this time again to catch up on stuff that I've been slacking on, like you know, getting the Podnuts forums in order, getting all the up episodes of Podnuts Daily that are not on the RSS feed into the RSS feed, posting the Scott Moulton interview for Podnuts, um, getting the last Great Tech Debate episode posted. So I got a lot of stuff I want to do. So even though I'm not going to be doing shows, I'm still going to be putting out some content. So. And then next Podnuts Daily, next new Podnuts Daily will be the following Monday, which is what I don't know what date that's going to be, but not this coming up Monday, but next Monday. Have an HP computer in the uh, shop today. Had a bad hard drive. So found out I had a bad hard drive because uh, when it starts the computer, it, it, oh by the way, it was like a DV six thousand, I think, pretty pretty new HP laptop, maybe a little over a year old. It start the computer. It would stick at the BIOS screen for a unusually long period of time. Now, this happens when a hard drive is bad because the BIOS is trying to communicate with the hard drive, not making a good communication, so it just kind of sticks there. So you might wonder, like, oh, is this a motherboard problem? Is this a BIOS problem? Why is it sticking at the BIOS? If, if it's a hard drive problem, eventually, you know, most of the time, it will say, okay, I forget it. I can't communicate with the hard drive and continue on through like trying to boot from the CD or whatever it's instructed to do. Well, this one that was doing that for a long period of time would stick at the BIOS screen. Then it would just reboot. After like 10, 15, 20 seconds of BIOS, it would just reboot. When you take the hard drive out, it eliminates that problem. The BIOS boots fast and then it doesn't reboot the system. It just says, you know, no operating system found or it tries to boot from the CD drive. So we pulled the hard drive out and that's how we found out the hard drive was bad. Tested the hard drive on an external machine. Hard drive is pretty much toast. Replaced this hard drive. Sixty dollar uh, for six dollars for a hundred and twenty gigabyte SATA two two and a half inch hard drive at Micro Center, and we fixed that problem right up. We used a Vista OEM CD, and I was able to use the code on the bottom of the HP computer, the product key from the bottom of the HP computer with the uh, this OEM Vista Home Premium CD. Everything worked fine. In fact, the the Vista OEM CD that I have is a Vista 64-bit. I don't know that the operating system that came with the computer was a 64-bit, but the product key on the bottom of the system worked with this OEM version of Vista. So still trying to figure all that stuff out. Don't know. I never know what's going to work completely 100% of the time. So you just got to give it a shot. Okay. Another HP laptop, bad motherboard. Okay. This is a DV1000, another nightmare machine. I, my, my dad actually had one of these. Um, I gave it to him as a gift, I think, and then the motherboard went. I replaced the motherboard. That motherboard went. I hate motherboards on DV1000s. They're flaky. Anyway, um, this motherboard went. Uh, we knew this was the motherboard because we'd power on the system. All the LED lights would come on, like the quick launch buttons and all that stuff, but no video on the screen, no hard drive activity. So what I did then was took out the wireless card, took out the hard drive, took out well, both sticks of RAM and put in a piece of RAM that I'm, I knew worked. I just wanted to see it to the BIOS screen. Still, no video, no hard, uh, no hard drive activity. So, it, and it doesn't have a external or not external. It doesn't have a separate separated video card from the motherboard, which some laptops do. And I've seen that cause this problem where system tries to boot, no video, and no hard drive activity. It's, it's a bad graphics card. And this was just a bad motherboard. So I just replaced the motherboard on that. Um, on eBay for one twenty nine, I think, from Blue Raven Technology. And let's see, I even got it overnighted for like it's thirty bucks overnight. So for one hundred sixty bucks, get a brand new motherboard. Um, you know, and then you could charge the customer. You could do usually do pretty good markups on motherboards because it's a tough job, and the motherboard is kind of expensive. You could you could add um, like a premium price to it if you want. That's what I do. Because it's a tough job replacing a whole motherboard. A lot of work, a lot of screws, a lot of patience, a lot of concentration needed. Sometimes I do a, I finish installing a motherboard in a laptop and I'm like, man, I got to take a break after that. It's like physically, it physically wears you down. Um, one other thing we found out today, task manager. If you open the task manager in Windows XP, sometimes you might find that there's no, um, 
window the, the, or the window for the task manager, most of it's missing. Like all the process, the tabs are missing. Um, like the file tools, um, that whole bar is missing. I can't remember what that bar is called. Um, the red X, the wind, the blue and the red X of the windows, the windows, uh, actual window is missing. It's just a thin blue. Um, I think it's thin blue rib, uh, border around a task manager with no options, no way to, to, to mess, to change options on it. Well, that is actually not something that's, um, caused by spyware and malware that they might try to make that happen. So you get confused, but it is, um, if you double click on the gray area where the task, the tab bar should be. The, the tabs will come back, the file bu- file will come back, the window will come back, and it will look like the regular old task manager. And then if you double-click again on the gray area next to the tabs, it will bring it back down to that minimized mode. It's just a mode so it doesn't take up more a lot of your computer screen, basically, and you can still keep the task manager up. So if you ever had the task manager that looks like it's just messed up and not there and it's just a window, it actually is. You just have to double-click on the gray area. It will bring it back up. All right, let me read a couple emails here. Okay, give me one second. Emails. Roger writes a few malware tips. Steve, I came across a neat website I thought you might like. It's remove-malware.com. I will post that link in the chat room. Remove-malware.com. And he says... I never went there, guys. So it's okay. the guy that runs it repairs computers and apparently cleans quite a few PCs. So he has a lot of real world experience. He might even be a good interview for your next episode of Pod Nuts. Hmm. I will look into that, Roger. He tests most of the popular antivirus and anti spyware programs and shows you how effective they are at preventing and removing most of today's malware threats. Antivirus 2009, Vundo, etc. His videos are on YouTube also. Just search for M R I Z O S. His website also has a bunch of good tips for cleaning infected PCs. I heard you mention using the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows for cleaning PCs on one of your shows. Just wanted to let you know that when you boot into Ultimate Boot CD for Windows, there's a program on the desktop called Easy PC Fix that cleans temp files. Always nice to run this to speed up your scan times. In addition to Super Anti Spyware, there's an antivirus program called Antivir on the Ultimate Boot CD for Windows that has a great detection rate and a really fast scanner. Yeah, Roger, I believe that's by a company called Avira. Um, lastly, if you're looking for a quick booting CD to clean malware off PCs, check out Kaspersky Rescue CD. It's a bootable Linux CD that takes about two minutes to start up and is updatable. Kaspersky has great detection rates, and it seems like a really good tool to have. All of those are awesome tools, Roger. Thank you very much. Um, Kaspersky on a boot, a boot CD, that's awesome. 